is Angus from Spotted Hog Airsoft here today up with the very early morning sun to bring you another airsoft video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ICS SIG 552 Sportline version AEG and if you're interested in picking this thing up at a rather affordable price of at $190 there's a link down below in the description to SpottedHogAirsoft.com. Now with that being said let's go ahead and hop straight into this review. As always, let's start off the review by covering the gun's packaging. As you can see, the external of the box looks pretty cool. And on the inside, everything is packaged rather nicely in a plastic mold. Inside the box, you'll have two pieces of paperwork, including a rather simple owner's manual, as well as an ICS informational DVD. Then you'll have a small bag of ICS .2 gram BBs, as well as a bright orange muzzle cap. A dejamming rod, and of course your ICS SIG 552 Sportline AEG as well as its high capacity magazine. Now, out of the box I really do like this gun, I've always been a big fan of the SIG series but have strangely never owned one in the airsoft world. Hmm. Anyway, this model is the Sportline version of the gun, meaning that's a little bit more affordable. However, the difference is that instead of the metal body, you do get a lighter plastic body. And that's the main advantage to this. Sure, it might not be as exactly durable as a metal body, but at the same time, in a gun like this, it's designed for CQB, it's a much lighter weight. I think it weighs only about five pounds, and it's much more maneuverable because of that. Now, talking about external construction, pretty much the entire gun is composed of that durable plastic or polymer. That includes your whole upper and lower receiver, your pistol grip, your whole stock, your iron sights, your rails on the handguard, as well as the handguard, and obviously that big bright orange flash hider there. The magazine is also constructed of the plastic. There are metal pieces on the gun, however, albeit they are extremities. These include your trigger, your fire selector switch, and also your charging handle. Rather small pieces as far as uh, metal to plastic ratio goes, but overall the gun does still feel rather solid. It's not like anything's cheap or going to break. It all feels solid, put together well. Also, all the pins and screws holding the gun together are constructive metal, so no need to worry about them cracking and breaking there. As far as internals go, I personally think ICS makes a great airsoft gun internally, and this one does have their metal gearbox, a split version design for easy access spring changes. Now, as far as everything goes all put together, you get a solid external gun as well as some pretty nice internals. Now, as you can hopefully make out and see, this gun does have some nice engraved trademarks on it. You're looking at the upper receiver on the left side of the gun. As you can see, engraved here, we've got SIG arms made in Switzerland, etc. And when you flip it over, you will find some engravings reading restricted for law enforcement, government use, and or export only. These are pretty cool. They just add a whole nother element of external quality to the gun. And also, they're engraved, so you don't ever have to worry about them rubbing. Off. Now hopping directly into features here, let's start off by what I consider the most important when it comes to an AEG battery space. Now keep in mind that like most ICS guns, the SIG 552 Sportline does not include a battery and charger. You will have to purchase one separately. For the review purposes, we'll be installing a Raptors Airsoft 7.4 volt LiPo battery into the gun. Keep in mind, it's not ready for 11.1 volt LiPos in my opinion. Now in order to install the battery, first push this retaining pin out. Now once the pin is removed, you'll be able to separate your hand guard as I have already done and open up your battery compartment to reveal your small type connector. Now the battery space inside this gun is a little bit small, so you have to be careful the size of the battery you choose, however this LiPo should fit. Let's go ahead and install it. Now once you've gone ahead and got the battery installed into the gun, the feeling is just oh so magical because in my opinion, this is the most annoying thing about the SIG 552 Sportline. The battery is a pain to get in and I doubt you could really do it in the airsoft field. It's just a matter of getting that handguard perfectly lined up in a battery space that's already kind of cramped and tiny to get everything set in place perfectly. That 7.4 volt LiPo did manage to fit, however things are a little bit tight and the handguard is a little puffy on one side. Otherwise though, it did fit in there and just overall the battery is a little bit annoying to get in because of such a cramped battery space and also the careful lining up of the two handguard halves. But once you've got the handguard lined up, just pop back in that retaining pin and the battery is installed, you're ready to go. Now once your battery is installed, you can obviously go and fire the AEG. Your fire selector is ambidextrous, not only being located on the right side shown here, but also on the left side of the gun as well. It features the standard three settings when facing towards the front of the gun. It's on safe if you were to flip it up. One notch, the gun will be on semi-auto, and if you were to flip it all the way backward, then the gun would be on full auto. 
These settings are engraved into the side of the weapon, so hey, if you ever forget them, they're on there. And also, selector switch is rather easy to move, but it also does require a little force, so it's a good balance. It's not necessarily going to have you really push in order to turn it, but it's not going to be slipping in between settings because it's so loose. Overall, a nice quality selector switch, and great that it's ambidextrous. When it comes to the AEG's magazine release, it's located in a rather easily accessible position for both left and right-handed shooters. It's the sort of paddle style release, as I would call it, located just behind the magazine. When you give it a push, the mag pops right out, so be prepared to grab it. Now the included magazine is a high capacity SIG style airsoft magazine that's supposed to hold a little over 400 rounds, and typically these things do. They do have a pretty good capacity in all honesty. The annoying thing about SIG magazines is the fact that they are a little bit harder to find and more expensive, especially when you're looking for mid capacity mags. Now the cool thing about the high caps, just to point out, and all SIG mags really, is that they do have these attachment points located on the side, similar to G36 style magazines allowing you to attach your magazines and stack them all together, eliminating the need for an airsoft vest if you really wanted to run them like that. Now the mag works like a standard high cap being wound at the bottom. BBs are filled in the top and also fed to the top as well. Overall this is a high cap mag and it does feed pretty well inside the SIG 552 as you'll see later in the video. It's also cleared so that you can kind of see the BBs inside and know when you're running low. A nice little SIG trademark is also cool on the side of the mag. Now when you go to put the gun's magazine back in, be sure to lead lip first and let it click into place like so. There's a little bit of wobble when the magazine is in the well, but overall nothing significant whatsoever. Now when it comes to talking about the SIG 552's iron sights, I think they're actually pretty nice. You're taking a look at the rear sight right now. This is adjustable. It's your standard drum style sight. You can turn it in order to adjust the different sighting you're looking through, as you can see in this adjustment here. Now the rear sight's obviously made to line up with your front sight, which is just your standard enclosure sight post that is not adjustable. Overall these iron sights are pretty accurate to the gun and I personally think they're pretty nice. One's adjustable, one's not. However, let's say you don't like the iron sights as much as I do, don't worry because you have a nice 20 millimeter rail up top on the top of the upper receiver that you can go ahead and mount optics on. This is great that the SIG 552 actually has that built in so you don't have to bother with going to buy a scope mount. Now additional rails can also be found for customization purposes on the gun's handguard where the battery is stored. You'll have small rails on both sides of the handguard as well as one underneath. So theoretically, you could really deck this gun out with some nice flashlights and lasers as well as potentially a grenade launcher but more practically a foregrip on the bottom rail. Customization always a plus. The 5.52 does feature a side folding stock that is activated when you give this metal button a push here. Now when that button is pushed the stock does start to fold over like so and slams and locks into place on the right side of the gun. Now when the stock's folded this is much more practical for say CQB style airsoft play because it makes the gun a little bit more maneuverable for easier shooting in tighter situations. It's also great for storage purposes as well. Now when the stock's folded it's simply hooked on there by a small little notch however despite that being the only form of attachment it's secured on there quite nicely and isn't going to come off really no matter what unless you do force it which is how you get the stock undone. There's no button to push simply grab Grab on, give a little bit of force, and swing it outward so that it locks into place. The stock is very secure when it locks into the full position. It's not going to be jiggling open and swinging over to fold again. Also, the butt of the stock is nice and textured with some serration for aided gripping on the shoulder. Something kind of neat and interesting about the SIG 552 is that it does have a trigger guard that can swing outward. Say you're playing in the winter weather and you have bigger gloves, can't quite fit them inside the trigger guard. Don't worry, it does swivel out of the way. It can swing over to the right as well as to the left. The only thing I have to complain about this cool feature is that it is a little loose and it just kind of does swing on its own sometimes if you give it a little tiny bit of force. Just kind of annoying. Now when the gun's charging handle is pulled back, you will reveal your weapon's hop-up unit, which is a rather large style gear, as you can catch a glimpse of there. It's rather large and easy to access, and overall the hop-up is pretty good as I'd expect on an ICS gun. Don't believe me? We're going to put it to the test right now in the performance portion of the video, and we'll not only chrono, but also take a few shots at a target. When you release the charging handle, it does produce a pretty nice clack. As far as the chrono went, we used Raptors Airsoft 0.2 gram BBs and of course that 7.4 volt LiPo installed earlier. When it came to feet per second, we saw a rather nice FPS, very consistent at about the 360 feet per second area. This is great for CQB, which is what the gun is designed for. When it came to rate of fire, off of that LiPo, we saw about 15 rounds per second, which when converted to rounds per minute was almost 900. So overall, the rate of fire was quite nice in this AEG as well. 
For the shooting test portion of the video, I set up about 135 feet away from the target with the camera angle adjusted due to the fact of a high sun glare. We used 0.25 gram BBs and adjusted hop up to take aim at a target and overall I was pretty pleased with the results. As far as semi-automatic goes, the groupings were very tight, all BBs hitting the target or staying in the direct general area of it. There were no flyers off and everything would have stayed directly right where it was supposed to go. On full auto, we saw a little bit more leniency with what I call the cloud effect, a couple BBs spreading off to the sides, but overall the majority of them hammering home onto the target. Personally, I was pretty pleased with the accuracy shown at a pretty far distance, especially for a gun that would perform a little bit better at a closer range in CQB. test we can go ahead and hop into the final conclusion of this review bottom line like I stated at the beginning of the video I do like the SIG 552 quite a bit however there's one thing I can't stand about it in general not just the ICS version really all the airsoft 552s the battery space is a pain it's annoying to get the battery in because the compartment's so tiny and so cramped this is the biggest con I can think of it's just annoying I like a big battery space can change my battery in the field in this case because everything's got to be lined up perfectly and you got to really fit the battery in there carefully it's annoying. I don't like the battery space. Otherwise, I do like the gun quite a bit. There's really nothing I can complain about. I think it's built rather solidly. The features are nice, all very friendly for a CQB or outdoor field gun. As you saw at the performance test, at an outdoor range, it performed quite well. So you can imagine with this gun, with a CQB-friendly FPS, also more so designed for that closer combat, would do in an indoor-style game. So overall, it's a nice gun for somebody who's looking for something for CQB that could also perform in field as well. So it can really go both ways as far as the airsoft game world is concerned. The Sportline version did not disappoint me whatsoever. Yes, it is constructed of plastic, but it's a durable plastic, has a nice, solid, well put together feel to it. So overall, you're looking for a budget gun that's of higher quality that can go to both airsoft worlds, outdoor and indoor. This might be a good option. So this has been Spotted Hog Airsoft's review of the ICS SIG 552 Sportline AEG. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.